Coming up next on This Week in Torrance, volunteers get up early to hit the beach, but they weren't there to soak up the sun. We'll bring you the details. Then North High School students are given money and the chance to spend it all, but not on themselves, we'll explain. Plus, local officials celebrate Black History Month at an annual luncheon. And with Dave left to rehearse, we'll introduce you to the last two competitors ready to dance at an upcoming fundraiser. These stories and much more are just seconds away. Your local news starts right now. Hello, everyone, and welcome to This Week in Torrance. I'm Jin Chun. And I'm Ben McCain. Thanks for joining us. Here are your top stories. It may be too early for many of us to start making summer plans, but one Torrance nonprofit has already canceled theirs. Camp Escapades, a three-week program pairing counselors with disabled children, will not take place this August. And the reason is lack of funding. The day camp that gave special needs children a typical camp experience cost half a million dollars annually, and Pediac Pediatric Therapy Network, the nonprofit organization that sponsors the camp, decided to cancel to save money for other programs. Now, despite twice yearly fundraising efforts, PTN continues to battle state funding cuts. Camp Escapades had been a fixture in Torrance since 1997 and attracted more than 200 children to the camp every year. Instead of just cars, the Toyota Automobile Museum was recently filled with couture. Reporter Lily Mojica explains. The Toyota Car Museum was recently filled with couture. The South Bay Junior Women's Club teamed up with local Torrance businesses to put on a fabulous show for a very special cause. I hope people dig deep in their pockets and we raise a lot of money today. The South Bay Junior Women's Club and local retailers hope to raise at least $5,000 from the fashion show. 100% of the money will go toward college scholarships for five Torrance students. I think it's just a great thing to help out with charity whenever we can. Um, I received a scholarship from the police department when I was a senior, so it means a lot to kids and I totally understand where it's coming from, so I'm really excited. The fashion show was definitely a group effort. From the hairstylists to the local business owners and volunteers, Locals all played an important role in getting this show on the road. We're a local company here in Torrance, so we're so happy to be part of this fabulous fashion show to raise money for the young people of Torrance. And in the end, everyone who attended agreed that it was a success. Everything went off without a hitch. The, the models were beautiful. We've earned probably $1,000 for every scholarship we're giving out, so we really did a great job thanks to the wonderful women here today. The South Bay Junior Women's Club focuses on service and community building through charity events such as this. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lily Mojica. The South Bay Junior Women's Club is a subsidiary of the General Foundation of Women's Clubs. For more information, go to sbjwc.org. In honor of Black History Month, the Torrance Marriott was the place for an annual celebration. Reporter Lily Mojica takes us there. February is Black History Month, and the Torrance Chamber of Commerce, along with the Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce, came together to celebrate by honoring some very special guests. The celebration means we're, we are honoring each other. We're honoring people who have come before us, uh, and hopefully we will honor people who come after us uh, for all the hard work that they've done, like Mr. Crenshaw, you know, uh, and all the wonderful things, because if it had not been for him, I wouldn't be here today. A total of eight awards were given to those who have been a great influence in the African-American community and for their humanitarian efforts. Some of the honorees included celebrities, and others were local homegrown heroes. I feel really honored. I think um, it's always a wonderful pleasure when you're honored by people in your community that recognize you know, what I've done off the court and on the court. Walter Crenshaw, who's 102 years old and a documented original Tuskegee Airman, stole the show. As he was recognized as a trailblazer for cultural diversity, he received the 2012 Special Recognition Award. Thank you for the honor here today. I have my wonderful wife, 71 years, is my pedal. She's present in the house. Thank you all. 
Thank you so much, and thank the Lord. Our Torrance Fire Department also had an honor guest among them for the Humanitarian Award. I feel it's very important to have positive role models in the community. I feel honored and privileged to be a part of this uh, great event. Um, when, you, uh, when you go to take the stage and take the same uh, award as a uh, gentleman like uh, Mr. Crenshaw, it's a very humbling experience. But I do believe that in the minority community we do need positive role models and I feel honored and privileged to be a part of this uh, award ceremony. A resonating theme tonight was the endurance and positive social change among the African American community. This Black History celebration reminds us that our strength of character and our endurance have enabled us to become fighter pilots and football players and actors and basketball players and police officers and gold medal winners and, and, and yes, lead counsel for one of the largest and I think the best auto company on the planet. Uh, and President of the United States. But the World War II hero who flew his way into making history had two heroes of his own to thank for his success. I contribute my, everything to my parents, my mother and father. If you've got good parents, the offspring has got to be good. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Lily Mojica. Thank you, Lily. The Greater Los Angeles African American Chamber of Commerce was established in 1991 by a group of business owners and executives. Up next, we'll tell you how students learn the secrets to healthy eating. And we'll show you how the Torrance Library is getting ready for the summer. I'm Gary Sinise. I've had the great privilege of meeting and working with many of our country's heroes, our veterans, and heard their stories. But for the 58,272 names on the Vietnam Wall, their stories will never be shared. Help us change that. The Education Center at the Wall will put faces to the names, displaying photos, letters, and mementos of those who served, so their stories will never be forgotten. Visit buildthecenter.org and help us build it. Hi! <laughs> Baby Eddie meets Baby Maya. Oh, it's for us. Your baby's getting text messages? Yeah, I signed us up for Text for Baby. We get free text messages every week. Look. A car seat for the hospital. That's a great reminder. How do we sign up? Text BABY to 511411 and you'll get free health and safety tips every week. Okay, we're signed up. <laughs> Look. That's one smart baby. Just like her mom. <laughs> What if you could ignite your child's love of learning with one after-school program? What if that one program was easy and fun? Destination Imagination is the one. Destination Imagination has taught teamwork, creativity, and problem solving for more than 25 years. A major university study showed our students are ahead of others in creativity and critical thinking. Learn more at startateam.org and make Destination Imagination the one for you. Instead of sleeping in, volunteers hit the beach early on a recent Saturday morning. Reporter Ella Sagamonian tells us just what they were up to. Hi, I'm Sharon Lane and I've been with Heal the Bay for about a year and a half. My name is Victoria and this is my second time at Heal the Bay. I'm Ian Antrim and um, I've been here for a few hours. <laughs> this sunny Saturday, volunteers had their monthly meeting at Torrance Beach. I'm excited for the day. Um, it's my first time helping Heal the Bay in a more uh, involved role, but I'm excited. Sajrapur is one of several volunteers who have stepped up to educate newcomers on Heal the Bay, a nonprofit organization dedicated to cleaning up SoCal beaches. Today's focus is their monthly Nothing But Sand Beach Cleanup Day. Before beginning, volunteers give safety precautions as well as what items to look out for. It's a, actually an extreme difference. Um, every day the graders come by and pick up the large pieces of trash, but it's really the small pieces of plastic and you know cigarette butts all the way down to anything, the plastic bags. Every time I go in the water, you can find trash to pick up. So every little piece makes a difference. Volunteers must fill out waivers before participating, ensuring that they understand the dangers that may come with handling any unsterilized items found on the beach. Once volunteers have their gloves and plastic bags ready to go, it's time to help clean up the beach, making sure to avoid harmful objects like needles and syringes. Participants scour the beach for styrofoam, balloon remnants, plastic bottles and caps, common cigarette butts, and anything else unnatural to the environment. Cups, balloons, a lot of plastic. Get it open. 
Wow. Yeah. Just a variety of trash. How do you know. feel about <laughs> looking at what's in there and thinking it was in the beach just a couple of minutes ago? I mean, obviously it's a hazard to animals and a hazard to the environment, so I feel pretty good that it's in the bag now. All items found on the beach are recorded onto a cleanup data card. Heal the Bay can then deliver these statistics to lawmakers who can take action against marine debris. This is just the type of evidence that helped convince Santa Monica to ban styrofoam. Marine debris has injured or killed members of at least 267 species worldwide, 60 to 80 percent of which is plastic. It's programs like Nothing But Sand Beach Cleanup that allows us to enjoy cleaner and safer beaches. But everyone can help make a difference by cleaning up after themselves and being wary of leaving behind garbage or harmful items in the sand. For Torrance City Cable, this is Ella Sogamonian. To learn more, visit HealTheBay.org. It's never too soon to learn about healthy eating habits, and one Torrance Elementary School is getting started, one classroom at a time. Reporter Ella Sagamonian has the story. Does anyone here would like to mention what's their favorite type of grain? Yes? Rice. Rice is your favorite grain? That's good. Fifth grader Khaled Millar is getting an early lesson in life about healthy food choices and portion control. It is important to balance it because if you eat too much of something, it's good for nothing. Satellite director at Hickory Elementary School, Debbie Oviedo, is going classroom to classroom, hoping to teach these students how to create and choose a healthy eating lifestyle. Do any of you recognize this poster? All of you do. Good. This poster was around when I was going to school. And it's a little confusing. So thank goodness we revamped the food pyramid, which is what that was called. And we now have my fabulous plate. A lot easier for all of us to figure out what we need to eat, how much of the foods we need to eat, because the plate is divided. My plate was first introduced by First Lady Michelle Obama in an effort to fight childhood obesity. It demonstrates a healthy balance of food split into four sections, fruit, vegetables, grains, and protein. A smaller circle sits beside it for dairy products. To personalize their learning experience at Hickory, students drew and colored their favorite foods in each category on a MyPlate worksheet. I think once they learn how to eat healthy here at the school district, they can then take this home and also teach their parents or their, or their sisters or brothers or their siblings and they can help like, hey mom, hey dad, look what I learned today in my class. I learned about um, eating more fruits, eating more vegetables. I tried to drag fig today in class today. So um, that you know, is a, would be beneficial for for them to learn about nutrition in school and then take it home as well. And Hickory Elementary practices what they preach. Students are offered balanced meals in their cafeteria. By offering a, an assortment of fruits and vegetables, which you can see behind me, and we offer um, whole grain on our pizza and uh, low-fat mozzarella cheese. Um, we try to keep it balanced with the protein, the grain, and the fruits and vegetables. Five schools in Torrance are making the change in partnership with Torrance Memorial Hospital, whose dietitians came up with the lesson plan. But educators like Oviedo need the help of parents to volunteer to distribute their knowledge to students K through 12. So as we move away from the food pyramid that we all grew up with, all we have to remember is to keep a balanced plate and portion size. And don't forget to exercise. This is Ella Sogamonian reporting for Torrance City Cable. Thank you, Ella. If you're interested in learning more about My Plate or volunteering, talk to your child's school and visit choosemyplate.gov. In a time when iPads and Nooks are taking over books, one group is helping to preserve the library experience. Reporter Ella Sigamonian explains. This may resemble Santa's toy assembly line, but what this group is giving is a different kind of gift. 
Friends of the Torrance Library have been raising money to help fund various programs for the city's libraries since its inception in 1965. This month, they will make a $21,000 donation to the annual six-week summer reading program. Studies have shown that kids, uh, children and teens who continue to read have better scores, return to school with more comprehensive vocabulary, and they haven't lost any of their ability to read because the summer reading program encourages them to, to keep up those skills. The Friends of the Library collect the funds from their quarterly book sales, the daily selection sold in the Katie Geyser lobby, as well as from the books sold on the internet, all of which amounts to about $100,000 a year. Last year, 4,000 students participated in the program. We enjoyed the summertime reading program last year. Um, they were able to read some books and mark it off on their little um, checklist, remember that? And then we brought it in um, to show the librarian and she gave you a little something at the end of the week. Remember that? Yeah. Any kind of service that brings children into libraries and helps them to improve reading skills and enjoy reading, that's probably the one thing we would always, always fund. Thanks to Friends of the Library, students have one more summer to look forward to to enhance their reading skills. For This Week in Torrance, this is Alice Gamonian. The annual summer reading program starts in June, and here's more news from the Torrance Library. They will soon be launching a new audiobook format called Playaways. For the cost of a current book on CD, the format provides the audiobook and the player all in one, in a device that's about the size of an iPod. Now, because they are digital recordings, the user can also slow down or speed up the pace of the reading. The Friends of the Torrance Library recently voted to donate nearly $5,000 to help launch this collection at the library, which will be coming soon. North High School students were recently given money to spend, but not on themselves. Reporter Bianca Palos explains. The power of giving is unknown until we actually give. Students at North High made it a goal to fully understand what giving means by donating and volunteering for a charity of their choosing. The rewards are unforgettable, like the smiles on the kids' faces, like how much they really appreciate it. Parents, faculty, and students gathered at the school's library to learn about the giving project. Eleven groups of students were given $100 to spend on a person or people in need, and they had to do so within two weeks. So, students got creative. Some gave back by giving pedicures to the women at a shelter. I just wanted them to feel like they're worthy and that they are, they are loved. Others handmade jewelry for cancer patients at a local hospital. After we made all of our friendship bracelets, uh, we made over 200 and we actually got to give them to the kids and that was the, that was the greatest part for me. A panel of judges chose the winning team who will receive an extra $400 to donate to their charity. Good transfer. Come on up. It is clear that this assignment went beyond anyone's expectation. I'm just so proud of them. I mean, they've already done amazing things. Uh, you know, they've collected 20,000 canned goods for shelters as well. But there wasn't anything personal about it. I really wanted this experience to be personal, and they just nailed it. Parents took pride in knowing that these students reaffirmed a lifelong lesson. Even though you think that you don't have a lot, there are people out there that have even less than you. The winning group donated their money and time to Frances, an elderly woman in hospice. Her friendly smile and willing attitude had its impact. She told students about her youth, her struggles, and some of her favorite things. I felt like, you see, I never had a grandma or I never looked up to anyone like that and meeting her was like I had a grandma. Learning to give from the heart is priceless and giving is giving in all shapes and sizes. For the students here at North High, their contribution will be a lasting one. For This Week in Torrance, I'm Bianca Palos. This is the first year for The Giving Project. Coming up, the competition is just days away. That's right, and after the break, we'll take you to the rehearsal of the last two competitors for Dancing with the South Bay Stars.
from a place of love that I became an activist. It is just a fabulous area, full of life. It's one of the few areas of temperate whole growth forest left on the planet. In the early 90s, it looked like all of the intact forest would be clear-cut logged, and it was very devastating to think of that possibility. So it was quite a pivotal time right then to take action when we did. One third of the massive Great Bear Rainforest will now be protected from all logging. We're talking about an area the size of Switzerland. Having the Great Bear Rainforest protected now really means a lot to our community. I would say we're part of the environment just like the animals are. The greatest thing that I enjoy is seeing a total stranger respect this area. We're hoping that years down the line, this place will still be looking the same as it does uh, right now. This neighborhood sure has changed a lot over the years. You know, there was a time when people like me couldn't live here. I will never forget being told I wasn't welcome in this neighborhood. Well, I own this building now. The Fair Housing Act made a difference for someone like me, so I can choose where I want to live free from discrimination. Glad you can make it. Make this way. And finally, let's take a look at the last two contestants who will compete for the top prize at the Dancing with the South Bay Stars fundraiser. Reporter Alexa Sita has more. They are wonderful and uh, they help the kids. Also, they help the old kids like me. Jane Ye yeah is talking about the YMCA, and the organization is close to her heart. Her daughter Grace has been on the Y board for the last 10 years. Grace is also on the board of the Torrance Cultural Arts Foundation. Here we go again. Where we go? There you go. <laughs> Put those two facts together, add Jane's enthusiasm, and you've got a great dancer in the making. We'll do slide, right? And there you go. Except we need to look out at the mirror, right? You go. She took to the dance very easily, so. But it's a, it's a graceful yet uh, elegant dance. And when a rock step, you want to step straight back. Rock step slow, but try not to pull. Okay. Right? Let me pull you, right? Rock step slow quick, quick, slow. That way it's easy, right? Because if you pull against me, then you cancel out the lead. That dance is the nightclub two-step. And if Jane wins, her prize will go to the Y. But perhaps Jane has already won the prize for being a good sport, especially given her daughter's unique way to get Jane to participate. Well, she signed me up without telling me. <laughs> there you go again. I would say cha-cha's a 10. According to dance instructor Robert Porch, on a scale of 1 to 10, the cha-cha has the highest degree of difficulty. That was it. <laughs> <laughs> the rhythm is constantly changing, and it's really fast, so you have to be thinking and counting and, and making your feet uh, do all that work. Two, three, cha-cha-cha. Two, three, cha-cha-cha. Two, three, cha-cha-cha. Two, three, four, five. Good. It's crazy because it's so fast. The music is so fast. And so trying to keep up with the music and not miss a step and also count and do all the other things. Sounds tough, but Sherry Davis doesn't seem to shy away from a competition. She's even been known to talk a little smack. I watched other people tango and waltz. I go, look at all that time they have. And Sherry is not just learning the dance. At times, she's doing some of the choreography. Am I standing straight? Um, pretty much. Let's try it again. Okay. Let's try it again. She came in uh, a couple yeah, times and, and uh, suggested uh, things she had seen oh, from yes, you know, watching uh, dance online. And um, she was like, oh, can we try this step? I saw this. And she demonstrated it. And I was like, oh, yeah, you know, I've, se I've seen that before. And so we put a couple of them in the, in the routine. Sherry is taking the competition seriously so she can help raise some serious money for Pediatric Therapy Network. All one piece. 
I'm excited for PTN. We really do want to hand them that check. Um, they're, they've gotten terrible fund cutting, and, and hopefully we can still help special needs kids. And besides the complicated steps and changing rhythms, there's one more thing that Sherry will try to remember. I need to relax and enjoy this, which I try every day. For City Cable 3, I'm Alexa Sita. Thanks, Alexa. And there's still time to buy tickets for Dancing with the South Bay Stars happening on Saturday, February 25th at 8 p.m. For more information, call 310-781-7171 or visit torrencearts.org. And that's going to do it for us on This Week in Torrance. I'm Ben McCain. And I'm Jen Chun. If you've missed any portion of our show, you can catch us again at 11 a.m. and 6 p.m. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time.